Hey guys, welcome to CPL Fever. It's your host, Jack Murray and Andrew Murray. And today we are joined by box to box midfielder and Atletico Ottawa new signing, Ajay Cabra. So, how are you, Ajay? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. And just so happy that you said yes to come onto the show. Yeah, I know. I'm excited to be here. Great. So, um, so let's kick things off with, you know, the beginning. You know, I always like asking, you know, how did you fall in love with soccer? Because, you know, for, for a lot of people, you know, soccer is just kind of coming into, into the Canadian mainstream. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I started at a really young age. I started at the age of like three or four years old. Uh, so my dad uh, was really, really interested in soccer. He played soccer growing up. Uh, so he kind of started me in the whole thing. And then from there, I just developed a passion for it and kept it going. Uh, but it's it's definitely because my dad, he got me going uh, really early. And, and luckily, I, I enjoyed it. And, and I kept go- kept it going from there. Okay. And where did he play? In, in uh, just, he, just, uh... Yeah, he was, uh, he was born in India. Yeah, and then he was raised here. So he played back home in India, and then he also played uh, here as well, about as high of a amateur level as you could play. So he played at a decent level, and he just loved the game. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, he definitely wanted me involved in the game somehow. And lucky for him, I enjoyed it. So it was uh, it was pretty good. And cool. now you're a professional soccer player. Yeah. And it's amazing that you started so young at three and four, because usually it's more six and five, but that's really mm-hmm. young. I yeah. kind of started around that age too, and I and just starting at that age when it's introduced to you, I feel like you love it even more almost. Because yeah, you it's do. Introduced you so young. Yeah, it's about it's about all I know, right? It's it's uh, from as far back as I can remember. I was playing with a ball, uh, so you definitely uh, start start the sport really early and develop a passion for it. Um, but yeah, it's it's been great for me to to start so early and to keep it going even now. So, did you ever play hockey, like growing up in Edmonton, or? I didn't. I'm a big uh, Oilers fan, huge fan. Okay. Uh, I never played. I'm I'm pretty bad on skates, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested in in hockey. I'm I'm gonna be keep track of uh, the playoffs that are gonna be there, so that's gonna be really exciting. Uh, but I stuck to soccer, so that's that's about okay. all the talent on the field that I had was with, with soccer, so I stuck to that. Now your dad, um, did he, because you say he played at a pretty high level, he was very interested in it. Yeah. Did he start kind of making you work on your weak foot like at a very early age? He did, yeah. He put me to it early. So he, he developed or tried to develop uh, as much ability and, and, and as much as we could uh, away from the training session. So we would do a lot in our basement and in our backyard. So we put a lot of hours in to do that extra work, like you said, working on your weak foot, working on ball control, working on your dribbling, your passing and that kind of thing. So we did put a lot of hours in. And again, it's it's all because of him, right? When you're younger, you, you'd probably rather do, sometimes you'd rather do things like watch TV or, or hang out with your friends. And, and sometimes he kind of just gave me that reminder of, okay, if you can put in an hour here, an hour there, or you can you develop fun ways for me to, to enjoy myself while also training. And, and so I, I, yeah, most of my, all of my credit kind of goes to him. So it's, it's, uh, I really appreciate what he did for me. Great. That's a good story. Yeah. And it's a really good story. I really like it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to kind of keep it going and be playing now. And he, he loves watching me now as much as he did before. So it's awesome to keep it going. And again, I thank him for all he did. Yeah. And it's awesome that your dad still watches you. And does he like come out to every game or like, he does. Oh, he's a big wow. fan. He's a big fan. Him and my mom both. Uh, my whole family is actually very, very supportive. Uh, they're at every single game. I mean, last year they were able to come to down to Calgary and watch me play. Uh, it was probably tough, tough for them to to hear all the booing and, <laughs> and calling. But no, it, it's really nice. They've been super supportive. I actually just uh, uh, I bought I think eight or nine jerseys for for my family. So it's it's really nice to have that. Uh, support and 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 everybody watching you and 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 being proud of you. So it's it's again, I thank them for for all the support they've showed me. And yeah, it's been great that they've been able to watch me uh, last year at home. Yeah, it's a it's a great feeling to be watched by people that you love. It is exactly yeah. So when did you first get in your mind that you you could go pro? Ah, uh, that, that's that's a tough question. I mean, growing up, that's kind of every every kid uh, who plays any sports main goal. 
Um, so obviously, I, I kind of had that that goal as you know at a really really young age. But uh, just growing up, I kind of had different goals. I wasn't looking too far ahead. I mean, after youth soccer, I was kind of thinking, okay, if I can have a good university career and get a scholarship, that's successful and that's a goal that's attainable for me. So it kind of changed as as I was playing, and then obviously uh, after university the opportunity arose and and it became really real so it, uh, it, it my, my goals kind of change as I, as I went along but again uh, when you're growing up playing any sport that's kind of the ultimate goal right so I'm lucky enough to be doing that now for sure yeah. yeah and you also went to the academy and you won a U14 national championship with Edmonton Juventus yeah. So yeah. what was it to um what was it like to win that and that 2009 uh championship? It it was great. It was uh I think it 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 really helped me going forward. Uh from there on I had and my team had really high expectations, right? So we had really high standards, really high expectations to win, to perform, to get better. Um, so it kind of gave us really high goals moving moving forward, and and again we were able to compete against some really good competition, which obviously made us uh, better players. Uh, and I was able to play obviously with with some amazing players, so that definitely helped me. But it was it was awesome to get that success really young and kind of push me going forward for sure. And then you had a lot of success with the University of Alberta Golden Bears, winning the the MVP as well. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was nice. I, I won that one my last year, so it was really nice for uh, to win that kind of kind of bowing out, and uh, so that was that was really nice. But but again, it's more about the team accolades. So it was just really nice to win as a team uh, there, obviously, and and uh, that yeah, that MVP was just really nice to go out go out with that award too. So yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So um, have you always played as a midfielder? I have, yeah. I uh, I'm not the not the fastest guy, not the, not the strongest guy. I don't have the best shot, but yeah, I've always I've always played as a midfielder. Whenever uh, when I started playing, uh, really young, and and I've always kind of had uh, the ability to pass the ball and 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 try to get other people involved and, and try to be dominant in that type of way. Uh, so I've always been always been a midfielder. Um, kind of you know I played in different positions just like everybody else on the outside. And I think playing in different positions actually helps you, right? Because you understand more of the game. But predominantly, I played in the central midfield, so it's pretty familiar for me. Yeah, what I yeah. noticed in your in your highlight reel is at the beginning, there's kind of a lot of gesturing and like you can't hear what you're saying. Yeah. But it really seems like you're you're intensely trying to get everyone in the right position and and kind of play that that quarterback role. Yeah. Is that is that something that you see yourself as someone that, that sits in the, yeah. in the real center mid and and controls the the game? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely trying to improve on that. Actually, I'm. Uh, yeah, they may have picked out just a couple of moments where I'm actually very vocal and very animated. But yeah, I, I try to to maybe dictate the game with the ball. So I try to be uh, very very dominant with the ball and. and be active with the ball, uh, but again, the the leadership qualities are, are something I just want to keep developing as I as I keep playing at the high level. I think it helps any player out and helps out the team. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely a quality that is is really helpful to the team. So I'm just trying to develop that as I go for sure. And I thought that you looked really smooth and really comfortable with the ball. I found so. Do you think that because you started at such an early age really helped you with that? Or yeah, why do you think yeah. you're so smooth and comfortable with the ball? Because it looks oh, really I, nice. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that compliment. But no, yeah, I think that, that definitely has helped, right? It's it's if you're really comfortable on the ball and 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 receiving and dribbling and passing, it definitely helps you out. I think confidence is, is also a big thing, right? When you're confident and you do make a mistake. Uh, it's no worries because you're you want to get back on the ball. You want to make an impact again. So I think, like you said, being comfortable on the ball and, and playing for a long time and having being able to play at a high level definitely helps you out. Uh, but I think confidence is a big thing too because everybody makes mistakes, but you just gotta go back to doing what you're you're supposed to do, even if you do make a mistake, uh, and just be be confident and helping the team and, and doing whatever you can do to to help your team be successful for sure. Uh, yeah, what's definitely. one of the yeah? What's what's one of the most important parts uh, characteristics of being a box to box midfielder? I mean, obviously there, there's running involved, but yeah. what what do yeah. you see as kind of the most important? 
Yeah, you got to have a lot of energy, that's for sure. If you want to be on uh, both sides of the field, uh, one of my old coaches would always say energy, energy, energy. So you got to have definitely a, a lot of energy to be able to do that. Uh, I think one thing that I'm, I keep trying to develop is is just kind of uh, your body positioning. So that kind of makes, I think, uh, make good players kind of be able to step it up and, and play at the next level. So body positioning is really good in terms of, receiving it side on, trying to go forward, but also recognizing the moments where you might not be able to go forward and, and you got to go backwards. So that's definitely important in possession. And then also just kind of read in the game, right? Sometimes you're able to bomb on and, and help out going forward, but sometimes you got to relax and settle things at the back, right? So it's kind of a, a balancing act. And I think you got to just kind of read the game a little bit and then try to understand the, the game uh, as much you can that definitely helps out of box to box midfielder uh but yeah i think there's so many qualities which help you out even 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 goal scoring which is one thing i'm trying to definitely improve on uh is a big thing for midfielder right if you can add goals and assists that that helps the team uh going forward and that's again another thing that i think is really important for a box to box midfielder and i'm trying to develop going forward for sure and who who do you try and model your play style on or who do you admire as a box-to-box midfielder? Oh, there's a lot. Uh, I, so I'm a big United fan. So I love Pogba, obviously. So exciting to watch. I mean, I wish I had that talent and physique, but I definitely don't. So that's kind of tough to replicate. But uh, so many players, I, I try to take a little bit from different players. So Pogba, uh, I don't know if you know school Paul Scholes from, from he played uh, with United uh, years back. Uh, yeah, so I know a little about him, but I didn't really yeah. watch him play. <laughs> yeah, he's an excellent, excellent passer of the ball and reader of the game. Uh, you know, I like players like Thiago on Bayern. Um, there's, there's, you know, Frankie De Jong on Barca. So there's so many players that just do great things that I try to watch and take a little bit uh, of quality and, and a little bit from each, each of those players' games and hopefully try to replicate them, right? For sure. Mm-hmm. A little bit of... Of a little bit from some great midfielders, and so you can all add that from your game. I really like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses, right? So, I mean, mm-hmm. if you can see what these players do well and try to replicate them and put them in your game, I think that's just going to help you moving forward for sure. And you mentioned you were a United fan, right? Yeah. So, do, will they get Champions League football with Man City's mm-hmm. ban being lifted? Because Leicester and Chelsea are kind of falling down. I'm really hoping so. I'm really hoping so. I mean, it was a tough game <laughs> a couple of days ago. Uh, it's a tough, tough one to watch, but I think it'll come down to the wire. They play Leicester in the the last game of uh, the season, so it might come down to that. You never know, but hopefully we can mm-hmm. keep this form going. It's been really nice to watch. They're, they're starting to play some attractive football, right? So yeah, Bruno Fernandes has really helped with that. Oh, yeah, he's a quality player. So I'm, I'm enjoying watching right now, and hopefully we can – Get into that Champions League next year. It's a big step for them. Yeah. By the way they're playing, they really could get into the Champions League. I'd love if Wolves could get into the Champions League, but it would be nice to see Man U back into the Champions League because I think they've only qualified like two or three times since Sir Alex Ferguson left. Yeah, it has it. Oh man, you're uh, yeah, you're not making me feel too good about the team right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been some tough times, that's for sure. But like you said, this is a big opportunity, right? They have a couple games. I mean, if we would have got the three points last game, it would have been in in their hands. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Hopefully, yeah, they can win out the last couple games and and hopefully top Wolves and get into that Champions League next year. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I think. I think it will rely on the Leicester game. If you guys win, I think you'll be in the Champions League. <laughs> and are you a Wolves fan? Yeah, I'm a Wolves fan. Um, I can't believe that they just that Burnley got a penalty today in the 95th minute. Yeah, I <laughs> I'm uh, disappointed uh, with that, but <laughs> yeah, I was pretty pumped up. Sorry to say, I was pretty pretty pumped up about that. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's, Wolves are Wolves are honestly a very very, very good team to watch. I try to pick up a lot from those players as well, and it's it's nice to see them do well, right? But hopefully they can keep the run going for the last couple of games and give themselves a shot, right? Yeah, I really would like to see a man you game versus a, a Wolves game, just because I like watching both teams. Yeah. Even though I'm a Wolves fan, I like watching Mason Greenwood and Bruno Fernandez a lot, and I know a lot of Man United fans. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a pretty exciting game to watch with both sets of players, for sure. Yeah. 
But um, also, I wanted to go back to you for a second and ask, what is your favorite formation to play in? Because bo a box to box midfielder can play in a lot of different formations, but what is your favorite? For sure, yeah. There's, uh, it, it all kind of depends. I'm really liking, uh, obviously, I hate to see it, but Liverpool's doing so well right now, and they're kind of playing with that 4-3-3. Uh, mm -hmm. But I kind of like, I, I kind of like that that formation. It uh, especially as a midfielder with the two uh, advanced midfielders, mm -hmm. uh, it allows you to press teams. It allows you to win the ball back. It allows you to really be box to box. Right, you have some freedom to go forward and also kind of help the play uh, and progress the play in the deeper position. Uh, so it kind of allows you to be a little bit more mobile and, and take over the game that way, whereas opposed to sometimes if there's two holding midfielders and an attacking midfielder in front, sometimes it can get a little bit more stationary, but it kind of depends on what players you have and, and what the coach wants. So either is okay for me, right? Both have their pros and cons, mm -hmm. but I'm really liking that 4-3-3. And, you know, even Barca has played it forever as well, right? So you're definitely mm -hmm. able to keep possession and kind of rotate and, and be dynamic in that formation for sure. Yeah, that 4-3-3 three, three is a very a solid formation. A lot of great teams are using it right now and getting a lot of good results, like yeah. Liverpool and Barca, like you said. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it, it adds a lot to both the offensive side of the game and the defensive side of the game. So it's kind of an intriguing formation and, and would be cool to play in for sure. So I read an article... Um... And according to Sport Logic, you were at the very top in the CPL in terms of passing and relief receptions, suggesting a knack for moving the ball and, and moving into space without it. Um, and I think that, that you kind of call it like an intellectual instinct in football. So congratulations on that. And, and how, did you, how did you develop that? I mean, was, was that developed by watching games with your, with your father, with your family? Yeah, I think that's the first time I've been called uh, intellectual, but I'll take it. Uh, no, it, yeah, I think it's, it, it's a lot of things. It's definitely watching a lot and understanding the game and understanding positioning and where you can be. And I'm actually trying to improve on that quite a bit even now. Uh, and I think it's, again, kind of that confidence and, and how comfortable you are on the ball as well that we kind of talked about before. So I kind of always want to be in a position where I can receive the ball, advance play or keep it. Um, and, and just trying to be as comfortable as I can when I'm on the ball and trying to trying to keep the ball. I don't like defending, as I'm sure most most midfielders or attacking players uh, don't like, right? So I, we want to have the ball as much as possible. So, uh, yeah, I like to like to be on it. But, again, watching and trying to be in those right areas definitely helps you, helps you out in terms of those qualities. Cool. And, yeah, and you've definitely won – a lot of things. And I just want to go back to the Golden Bears just for one little second. You won a U Sports title in 2016, right? Yeah, I did. Thanks for so having how, me. How was it like? Because obviously a U Sports title is a really big accomplishment because there are a lot of good teams in U Sports. And a lot of those U Sports players are now playing in the CPL, which shows how yeah. good the U Sports actually was. It's, yeah. So how did it feel to be the best in you sports? It was uh, it was amazing. It was it like you said. It's a it's a pretty tough uh, accomplishment, and 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 it was again like I had an amazing team. I was really lucky. I had an amazing team, amazing coaches. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was a lot of hard work, um, and obviously you got to get a little bit of luck as well. But uh, like you kind of talked about, right? There's there's a lot the quality in that league and I think it's being shown with with some of the quality players that are coming into the CPL there's now a couple players a Shamit uh, Shom on Montreal was actually one of my teammates so he was playing university and now he's he's doing really well in the MLS Joel Waterman's playing in the MLS he, he came from the, the U sports system as well uh, so yeah it, it kind of shows that the quality in in that uh, in that league and in the country so yeah it was, it was really nice to win and and it was in my fourth year so I had a couple uh, I wouldn't say tough years, but a couple years where we probably underachieved. So it was it was really nice to to win it all and and get some success for the university for sure. So when you moved from that into the into the CPL, um, what was it? What was the adjustment like? Were you were you surprised by the speed of play, or were you, were you able to kind of uh, adjust to it quickly? Yeah, that's the speed of play is definitely one thing that picks up. For, I think any level, any level that you go to the it's a little bit higher. The speed of play is definitely faster, quicker. Uh, just thinking the game, you got to be a little bit quicker. Reading the game, you got to be a little bit better. Uh, so it was. It, it's a transition. So sometimes it was tough, but I think with 
with uh, quality coaches, quality players, uh, obviously more experience in playing. It, it becomes easier and easier, and, and I was fortunate enough to get uh, a lot of games in in a row, and that, that definitely helped uh, helped me out for sure. But it was, yeah, ups and downs for sure. It, it was tough at the beginning, but uh, I definitely had a lot of coaches and, and teammates that helped me along the way. And as I played more games, I felt more comfortable and, and, and more confident. So, uh, yeah, I think I think definitely reading the game and, and just thinking the game a little bit quicker is, is one thing that's very different from the youth sport level to the professional level. Yeah, you and, played you played yeah, nearly every game for every game for FC Edmonton, right? Uh, were you expecting that to to play every game when when you came in, or yeah, did, did I mean, that kind of happen? Yeah, I'm pretty I'm a pretty competitive guy, just like uh, everyone kind of else in the league or anyone that plays sports. So I was I was pretty competitive and I have high standards for myself. Uh, so at the beginning, it was you know I kind of had to take a, a little bit of a back seat, and it was okay for me. Uh, it, it it developed that competitive uh you know the, the fire i guess in me and and i got to watch a lot of the game i got to learn from a lot of players uh and i and i kind of had to it didn't force me but i had to train really really as you do normally but you had to train even better and kind of uh get recognized in, in training first and then uh it allowed me to prepare myself for when i did get the opportunity uh and and yeah it was, it was really nice to be rewarded but uh, it is tough sometimes when you're not playing, but I think overall it helped me because I learned a lot from watching. And then when I did get that opportunity, I was definitely prepared. So it was nice to get that that run of games in for sure. Good. Yeah, and I just have to say it's amazing because you play like every single game, almost every single game for SC Edmonton, and that requires a lot of stamina. So do you think that your stamina got much better there in that time? Or do you think it just developed? it a little more yeah what do you think about your stamina? It, yeah. it definitely got a lot better uh, as, as I was playing but again I think I kind of had to be prepared right when you're not playing mm-hmm. games uh at the beginning of the season it is sometimes a tough transition to be playing quite frequently right so I kind of had to be prepared and 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 be ready if I did get the opportunity uh I think you know even even in youth sport it's kind of crazy but we'd play two games back to back Saturday Sunday 90 minutes right so I was kind of used to that the high work rate and, and having to recover pretty quickly so that I think did help me a little bit but yeah I definitely had to develop my stamina I definitely had to to change some of my my eating habits and and make sure I'm prepared physically and mentally before the games so there's definitely a lot that goes into that for sure yeah so uh speaking of um FC Edmonton, um, a lot of people say they, they underperformed a little bit last year. Um, what, do, what do you think that they, that they didn't have that they, that they needed? Why do you think they underperformed? Yeah, I think there's always a combination of things, right? But uh, at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to the players that are on the pitch, right? So uh, I think, you know, we, we obviously had to be better as a team. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say I can pinpoint one one thing. I mean, obviously, we dealt with some injuries. That doesn't help. Uh, you get some bad fortune sometimes, some bad luck during some games, so that doesn't help. Uh, but it, it comes down to just, uh, yeah, being able to perform, and, and that's everybody, right? That's all 20 players or however many players are on the, the squad. So I think we did have really, really high expectations as a team, and, you know, unfortunately, we didn't achieve kind of what we wanted. But I think everybody everybody learned from that, right? So hopefully uh, most players will, will, will improve going forward. But, yeah, I think it was just a combination of things. And, and yeah, unfortunately it didn't kind of work out the way we wanted it to work out. So uh, it seems that Jeff Paulus wanted you back. I mean, in an article he said that, that you were a victim of a salary cap. Obviously, you know, he, he kind of really relied on you um, on the field there. How close were you to, to re-signing? And um, tell, tell us about how, how Ottawa – uh, approached you because Ottawa is kind of the new the new club in town yeah it was uh it was really nice being home last year and representing my my home hometown for sure uh so yeah we we were kind of talking talking going uh from the season into the off season uh it's I mean it's football right so sometimes it just doesn't doesn't work out and, and both sides can't really come to an agreement which is kind of what happened uh and then yeah I was I was lucky enough for for Atletico Ottawa to be interested and as soon as I heard and kind of heard 
where they were coming from and what the, the club was all about, I was I was extremely interested and I was lucky enough for them to be interested in me. So I definitely got lucky uh, that uh, that now I, I'm here. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. So, so far it's been been amazing and and yeah I'm, I'm really lucky to be here for sure mm-hmm. and uh and how has the back to training been with your new team because obviously this is like a totally new team um but how's it been it's been really good like you said it's a brand new team so we need as much training as as we can get uh you need to become familiar with the movements of every player uh, you know the, the tendencies of every player so it's been really nice it's uh i'm i'm really lucky to have some amazing teammates both on the field and and off the field they're all super nice guys so we really get along and and on the field they have some there's a lot of players with a lot of amazing amazing qualities so yeah it's just getting to know each other and i think that takes time that takes games uh, that takes a lot of training, so the training's been been really, really good, and and we're looking forward to whatever type of season we have, and and yeah, and hopefully uh, we'll we'll be we'll be doing all right and make make our fans proud when the season begins. Yeah, I think that Atletico Atletico Ottawa will, will surprise a lot of people because I feel like some people are gonna doubt that they're gonna do as well as they actually are because they're a new team. But I think Atletico Ottawa has some really good players and i think they will surprise a couple people <laughs> for sure i'm i'm really hoping so i mean you saw i told you i'm a big hockey fan so you saw kind of what vegas did and there's been a lot of expansion teams that end up doing well right you have a lot of players that want to prove a point uh that sometimes might need a, a new beginning and a fresh start so i think uh i think yeah we have we have the quality and 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 we have some amazing coaches here and are in an amazing environment so i think uh again yeah we'll be looking to to surprise some people yeah mista um has you know quite the quite the the, the long history with soccer i mean what's what's something that you you've learned from from working with him that's just kind of on a different level or something that that, that he's he's uh, helped with with your game uh, honestly, quite a bit so far. It's it's pretty awesome to learn from somebody that's played at that high of a level. Uh, it's it's nice because he really stresses the the simple, the little things, right? That makes such a big difference. For example, body positioning, taking an extra touch if you have to, uh, setting the next person up to succeed. So just very little things that that they point out that sometimes you just need a reminder of or sometimes uh, you never really realize or never really thought of so I've already learned a ton so far the whole coaching staff has actually been great they've been really supportive um, they've they've again taught me so much already in this short period of time so from someone like that who's played at such a high level I'm just trying to try to absorb as much as I can and hopefully keep improving as a player yeah and I'm yeah. sure I'm sure miss that has so much knowledge playing at such a high level and Something that I also wanted to ask you was, how, what is your favorite thing about Atletico Ottawa, or Ottawa? You can pick. Mm. Yeah, there's there's quite a bit. I mean, uh, I think about the team. I, I think the the players that we have are really really good people. So it's I think it's a lot easier uh, as a team when when you have very very good guys and and great guys off the field so i mean it's been it's been amazing getting to know everybody and and it's been a lot of fun uh spending time with these guys so i think that's one of the best things on the field and and off the field uh ottawa is it's beautiful i i <laughs> I, I don't want to i'm not saying that edmonton's not but uh I, there's there's a lot to do here there's uh, a lot to do the restaurants are great it's 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 a beautiful place to live. there's a, uh, amazing people here as well so there's too many early things to point out for why I like being here. But uh, so far in the short time that I've been here, I've really, really enjoyed it. So for sure, it's, it's been amazing. All right, we'll have to blurt yeah, that part out for best... the people that are from Edmonton. <laughs> Edmonton <laughs> only <is> blip. Your... <laughs> Edmonton's um, great. Besides, besides the snow and the cold weather, Edmonton's great. So <laughs> we'll keep it at that. Hey, but what is your favorite restaurant in Ottawa? Because you mentioned how good the restaurants were. Oh, that's, uh, you're putting me in a tough, tough position here. Uh, let's see. We. It's funny. Me and my uh, me and my roommate actually. 
<laughs> it's not really a restaurant, but we kind of have a, 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 hopefully the coaches aren't listening, but we have a, a little ritual of going down to, it's, it's, it's called a cineholic. So if there's just like, uh, you know, treats like cinnamon buns and desserts. So we do that. We try to do that every week and it's dairy free. Unfortunately, I'm not able to have dairy or milk. So it's really good for me. Um, we go to Kettleman's bagels quite a bit. That's a, that's a really nice spot to go. Uh, there's a ton of patios right by right by where we are so there's there's a lot of options but um i think those two are 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 we're, we're pretty frequent customers there so i think uh, hopefully after hearing this they can give us a couple of deal for a couple of deals for for the weekend but we'll, we'll see yeah i yeah. was gonna ask um yeah i was gonna ask about about diet um so obviously yeah. you mentioned that you don't have uh you don't have dairy um is there any other special diet that you that you follow no, not really. Um, I'm when when you're playing uh, in the season, it's kind of for me. Uh, I'm I'm pretty lucky, so I I, I try to kind of obviously you want to eat the right foods, but I'm kind of able to consume uh, quite a bit of food just because you're working off so many calories and, and playing so much during the season. Um, and then I would just say uh, in terms of diet, I'm 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 pretty easy going, but but again, obviously you got to be aware of what you're eating, and I think just the days leading up to the game, you got to be, uh, you got to be very attentive to to what you're taking in and making sure you're hydrated and have the electrolytes and everything needed to to be able to perform for 90 minutes. Right? It's it's a pretty tough job, especially in the summer with the heat and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty. I'm I'm lucky enough to to be able to eat quite a few things and not have too many problems that way. So I think you just got to watch where you eat just in a, just as much as every other athlete does for sure. And what are your three favorite healthy foods? Okay. Healthy foods. Uh, I like uh, pasta quite a bit. Uh, okay. My go-to. Uh, we'll count sushi as a healthy food because okay. I really, I really that's, enjoy that. That's pretty solid. But yeah. yeah. Pretty good. And then I, uh, I like fish. So I like salmon quite a bit. Nice. So those are my three favorite healthy foods, I think, right now. How do you like to cook your salmon? Uh, it, it depends. I, I, I like, uh, I've been pan frying it quite a bit. So kind of on the, on the stove and, and, uh, I, you know, I have some rice with it. I have some vegetables with it. Uh, I made like a, a bowl a, a couple of days ago. So that was pretty good. Uh, I don't know if anyone else would think it's good, but I think it's good. <laughs> and, uh, it's pretty, pretty basic to do. So it works for me. I think it'd be good. I, I don't think I'd have many customers, but. <laughs> not going to be like Edelman pack the customers but it'll, it, it does the job for me for sure yeah um, that's what it needs to do that's what it needs to do <laughs> but I want to talk to you about being a box box midfielder a little more so what is your favorite drill to do as a box box midfielder it could be a group drill it could be a solo drill uh, I would say so uh, I try to do it actually a couple of weeks or a couple times a week. And it's it's kind of just focusing on receiving the ball and your body positioning. So uh, it's pretty pretty basic. I kind of put two cones in front of me and then come in towards the person playing me the ball and, and make sure I'm shoulder checking and then playing it back once with the right foot, once with the left foot. So kind of like there's pressure behind me. Uh, and then another movement would kind of be taking a touch away from the pressure and making sure I'm nice and strong and kind of have my, my body position, right? So someone can't win it in front of me. So take, taking that touch uh, in front of me and playing it back. And then another would be kind of opening up side on. So opening up side on receiving and going forward and kind of breaking a line. So it's kind of one simple drill. All you really need is two cones, someone playing you the ball. You can even use a wall uh, that I like to do again, a couple times a week. And it just helps me kind of get into that mindset. And, and when I'm playing, it's easier to receive the ball being aware of those those little things and kind of developing those habits that help me out in the game. That's a really good drill for box to box midfielders because I was yeah. just thinking about it and if you use all the movements that you'd like use in a game, it's hmm. kind of like you're preparing for every possible situ possible situation um, receiving the ball in a game. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes there's, there's pressure on your back, you got to go back, but a lot of the times us box to box midfielders want to get the play from deep in our own end and want to go forward, right? So body positioning is really important. So you kind of got to be side on, you got to be scanning behind you, you got to be looking before you receive the ball. So that drill kind of, for me, it uh, it highlights those things and makes me kind of, or reminds me about those things and, and makes it easier when I'm playing. Yeah, it sounds like a great drill. I'm a box-to-box -box midfielder too. I, 
well, sometimes I play on the wing, but sometimes I'm a box-to-box midfielder. So I'll definitely do that, Jill. That sounds like the best bo- like box-to-box midfielder Jill I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to put it down in the description <laughs> if, in case people didn't hear that part. If you're a box-to-box midfielder, that's the drill that you want to do. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully it helps you out as much as it helps me. Yeah, I think it will help a lot of people. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, and also, how did you develop playing with your head up? Uh, it's something, yeah, it's something that my, we kind of talked about my dad helping me out really early on. So it's something that he really uh, had me doing at a really young age. So whether I was dribbling or passing, it's all about keeping your head up, right? And it's uncomfortable at first, but the more you practice it, the easier it gets, right? So it's something where you just got to focus on when you're training, whether you're training by yourself or training training with your team, you just got to really focus on it so it becomes a habit. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm, I was able to do it at a young age with my dad helping me out, so it's became easier for me now, but sometimes still I got to remind myself about uh, looking and keeping my head up and scanning so I know what's going on around me before I even receive the ball. But yeah, it's very important, like you said. Eight, like at age 8, 9, 10? Like yeah, oh, even that. that younger so even like even younger okay yeah even when when i was you know five six seven eight playing with the ball just doing simple drills like like uh dribbling around cones or doing uh just touches on the ball if if you're focused on keeping your head up and you're able to do those things it just becomes a lot easier when when you're actually training with a team or playing games so obviously it depends on what you're capable of doing and what obviously the drills are going to become a little bit more challenging as you get older but if you can focus on that even at a young age, I think it definitely helps going forward for sure. So, so the interesting thing that I want to pull out of that is in some cases you want to prioritize that over, over um, speed in the drill. Yeah. And, and I think you can do a little bit of both, right? So for right. me, even, even this off season, I was working a lot on, on, on ball control and working with my weak foot. So what I would do is is to start off with, yeah, sometimes you just got to look down. You got to get uh, the, the movements going comfortable on the ball. So to begin with, I would do that. And once I began to feel a little bit more comfortable, I would focus on keeping my head up. I would try to obviously make it as fast as I could. But yeah, I was a little bit more focused on keeping my head up, having that control. And then the speed kind of just comes with, with repetition and, and as uh, if you if you become more comfortable, you'll obviously become a little bit more faster. But you can keep your keep your kind of mind on both things. But for sure, for me, it was looking up really really helps the game. And then with repetition, speed uh, speed will get better as well. Great, that's great advice. Yeah. All right. So I noticed uh, with Atletico Ottawa during this COVID period, they had some of the players feature your your top three books, um, and uh, I was struck by by one of them in particular. Um, so one of them was uh, Alex Ferguson, right? Yeah. Obviously yeah. You mentioned you're a big Man U fan. Yeah, I have to read that. <laughs> so, so that's a good takes. book to read. Yeah. For Alex Ferguson, it takes what it takes. Yeah. And then the the other two were. Uh, do you remember what the other two were? Yeah, I think I had uh, I had the Outsiders on there. That was a part of the classic from when I was really. I, I read that in school, I believe, but I loved that. And then yeah, the the third book was It Takes What It Takes. So. The, yeah. Yeah. And that's the one that third one was the one that I was um, struck by because I was struck by the term neutral thinking. Um, mm-hmm. And I was wondering what that what that concept is. And if you could just kind of explain it briefly. Yeah. So it's it's kind of it's kind of just a mindset that you have uh, and, I, and it can be applied to, to a bunch of different things. But with sports, it's kind of just focused on um what you're doing in the moment and how you've prepared yourself for that, right? So a lot of the times if you make a mistake or you're not performing well, uh, a lot of people allow that to affect them going forward, right? But really it doesn't have, it shouldn't have much effect on on your next movement or your next action, right? So it's about thinking about, you know, obviously you can you can use what you've prepared uh, in the past to help you uh, in the present and in the future but you know if things aren't going right that that really shouldn't affect you going forward right and it's a little bit di- different than, than positive thinking i think because neutral thinking is is just kind of taking the facts and you know it is what it is you're you're in this current moment you got to live in the moment and again uh if if you've prepared well 
you should be okay. And if things aren't going well, that, that shouldn't really affect you going forward. So it, it's really helped me because in sports, it's it's ups and downs. Uh, and even even in the 90-minute game, right, you're going to make a couple mistakes. That's normal. Uh, you're going to have bad games, right? But it's all about recovering and just thinking about preparing for the next action, the next game. Uh, so it was really insightful for me. So it's really about like kind of um, – kind of it, it is what it is and also – a very kind of be in the present moment thing. And do you exactly. find that, do you find that, that um, even at this level, you'll find players that, that kind of let themselves get carried away either by kind of good, good superstition or, or bad superstition, you know, when they should just be kind of dropping that and just, yeah, just neutral yeah. thinking. Yeah. I'm kind of a, a believer of uh, you, you can't get too high and you can't get too low. Right. You just kind of gotta, gotta take things as they come. Um, yeah, and like you said, like in, in, in soccer and any sport, confidence is huge, right? So you got to have the confidence to keep performing, uh, keep doing what, what you're comfortable doing and helping your team uh, be successful. So, again, you can't really let the past affect you too much, especially if things aren't going well. And you just got to be confident in your abilities and your preparation and, and what you're willing to help your, your, your team with going forward. Yeah, I think that's that's great advice. I really, uh, I really like that. Yeah, that sounds like a very interesting book. We'll have to check it out. <laughs> it is. Yeah, you should you should read that one for sure. It's applicable to a bunch of different things, not just sports, but they tell a couple of really good stories about sports as well. So it was very interesting for me. Yeah, and, and yeah, I think it would be really interesting for a lot of people. And we must, we, me and Dad both like books like that. We all actually our whole household is praying to books like that so we should check that out um but also did you support a la liga team before you joined Adle- atletico ottawa no i was always a atletico madrid fan from from the beginning ever since i start since i started playing at three years old i was no <laughs> uh, I've, I've always actually been been a united fan so for me it was united or nothing but uh no i always always uh, would watch Atletico Madrid and and would always kind of keep tabs on them. And now, obviously, I'm a I'm a big big big, big fan. So it's it's pretty amazing to be to be tied with uh, uh, an amazing and prestigious club like Atletico Madrid for sure. Yeah, it's amazing that they came over to Canada. I think it really shows that this is a new era of Canadian soccer, and we're gonna start probably beating the U.S. more because we just beat them like for the first time in like October of 2019 a little while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it was awesome that we did that. But um, who is your favorite player at, at Atletico Madrid currently and who is one player you would like them to sign? Ooh, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I like uh, I like a lot of their midfielders. So Saul, I like Koke, I like Thomas Partey. I think they're all... Uh, amazing players in terms of who they should sign. I think they should just be focused on, I mean, every day I'm seeing on, on social media that some of their players might be leaving. I keep saying that, that I know. Might be leaving it to Arsenal or, or different clubs. So I think they should definitely be concentrating on keeping those players. They have an amazing team. They're obviously doing well in the, in the league and still, still in the champions league. So I think they should be, Definitely. I mean, I don't know if I'm the one to give them advice, but yeah, I think they, should, they in my opinion, they should uh, try to keep those those players, right? They have an amazing talent and they have a, a really good team and, and coach. So uh, I think that should be their focus for sure. Yeah, because they have an amazing squad right now mm-hmm. because um, if they just could keep like the core of the group, like, and midfielders are, are obviously, pretty much, in my opinion, the most important part of a team. So, like, all of their, like, grim midfielders yeah. and stuff like that. And maybe just, like, someone who can provide a bit more goal thread, like, Cav- goal thread, like um, Edison Cavani, who they almost signed. Yeah. I think that would really put them in as a contender for, the La, for like, La Liga. They are a contender already. It's just... Barcelona and Real Madrid always seem to kind of battle it out for the title, and I'd like to see an, another team win it. Yeah, I, really I like good. I like following all those three teams. I really like Atletico, Atlet, Atletico Madrid because they came over to Canada, so that just gives them. I just really I started to like them a lot more. Yeah, I, was, I, I like them before, but now yeah. I'm really I like. Them. No, and they and they kind of. 
for me, they do whatever it takes to win, right? So sometimes it might not be the most attractive football in terms of keeping possession and outpassing your opponent, but uh, they defend so, so well. They counter so, so well, especially when they're playing the top teams so well that, that they're dangerous with that too. So I like that they're kind of willing to play whatever style it takes to win, which is the most important thing, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely yeah, they- a, a very good team. I, I wish I could remember what I heard um, Atletico Madrid say for a se- second, something about they pride themselves on doing whatever it takes to win. I think that's what they were saying. I think they said that in a quote somewhere, and I really like that. Yeah, that sounds about right, and, and they're obviously very successful for a reason. So I think I think you probably hit the quote spot on. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with Atletico Ottawa... Um, you know, uh, coming into the coming into the league, um, you know, how do you think, like, like how do you think they're gonna they're gonna line up when when they uh, when they start? Uh, in terms of how you how we'll do in the in this yeah yeah. So I, I, again, I think uh, I think we'll surprise some people. It's uh, it's always tough coming in uh, as as an expansion. Te- I mean, it, it would be very tough in any sport, right? Coming in as an expansion team, uh, but I think we'll we'll hit the ground running for sure. Again, like I kind of mentioned before, we have a lot of players uh, that have played at a really high level and a lot of players that uh, may have a tip on their shoulder. So I think that that might give us uh, an advantage going forward and. And uh, yeah, we just got to keep keep training together, keep doing the right things, keep becoming familiar with each other, and I think uh, we'll we'll surprise some people. That'd be nice. And where is when is the the training going to transition into into a tournament or a game? <laughs> oh, I don't. You have uh, you have probably a better idea than I do. It's it's we're we're just being patient with that whole yeah. process. We're doing whatever we can do right now, right? So when that time comes, we're we're very sharp and and prepared and ready to go. So our focus is on just what we're able to do right now, which is continue to train hard and continue to prepare ourselves for when that when that opportunity comes and we're able to play those games. Great. And I also wanted to talk to you about, I saw a couple of nice little chip passes in your highlight reel. So um, when did you start working on that? Uh, I've, been, I've been working on that quite a bit the last couple of years. Uh, I've always been someone who has played a lot on the ground and sometimes maybe uh, a little too short, a little too frequently. So uh, I think, you know, playing those long balls is, is, is key, right? It kind of opens up the space, especially in that midfield area if you're able to to get that ball in behind the defense so it's definitely something i've worked on the last couple of years and i worked on quite a bit this off season so hopefully i can keep 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 doing that well and it kind of just makes the game easier for me uh, and opens up the space for me uh, for the rest of the game if, if you are successful with those yeah i saw some a lot of those ones in your in your highlight reel some really great great long passes and and stuff as well yeah it's, yeah i gotta i gotta keep keep improving on that for sure but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that uh, I have been focused on uh, the last couple of years. Great. And uh, I guess you mentioned this earlier, but you said you're always kind of working on different things in your game. So, yeah. so that's something that, that, you know, just as a professional footballer, you're just always committed to like, even if you're not, even if you're good at something, you're always looking to kind of shore up those, those things where you, you might be a little bit weaker or your strengths to get them even stronger. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's going to have their weaknesses, right? So you got to obviously build on those and try to become a, a well-rounded uh, player. But but like you said, even even your strengths, you can improve on those, right? So uh, every day you train or if you're watching soccer, uh, you want to get, get better at, at every kind of aspect of your game, uh, which is what I'm trying to do. And there's a lot of different things I can improve on that will that'll help me um this season and, and and just moving forward with soccer so uh yeah i'm trying to improve on on everything and and, and kind of highlight the things that'll that'll definitely help me and my team be mm-hmm. successful this year yeah and outside soccer do you have any hobbies yeah uh, i'm a big uh big sports guy so i like that's probably one of my favorite things to do is watching sports whether it's soccer other sports playing uh other sports uh with my friends and that type of thing so i'm really really interested in in any sport so i'd say that's 
one of my hobbies is, is following that. I've gotten into, as you mentioned, reading a little bit in this in this break. So that's, I guess, kind of became a little bit of a hobby, which I didn't expect. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 always kind of watching watching sports and, and and following sports. So I think that's that's one of my hobbies for sure. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's good. And talking about books for a second, what is your favorite genre of books? Ooh, okay. I would say uh, I would say autobiographies. I like uh, I like kind of learning what what that person has been through. Whether it's I would say for me, it's uh, most of them have been sports related. Uh, so I kind of like to read about how they've achieved what they've achieved and and what they've gone through in their lives and and kind of the ups and downs that maybe you don't see if if they are a high pro- profile athlete maybe you don't see on TV right so mm-hmm. uh, for me it gives me some some pretty pretty uh, vital background information to how they got there and and is very interesting for me to read. So that's a little yeah. bit of that psychology background because you studied yeah. psychology biology. Yeah, yeah. What I makes guess. people tick? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, it's something I, I didn't really think about, but yeah, it's it's. I think for me, that's that's really interesting. Kind of seeing what goes on behind the scenes, right? Uh, and I think that that helps me as an athlete, kind of seeing uh, what uh, allows people to be successful on the field, off the field. It doesn't just have to be sports. Um, and and kind of just uh, uh, applying those things to your life if if they can help you out in, in any facets of your life. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah constant innovation again yeah for sure yeah and i also wanted to ask you when you're on the pitch is there a skill move that you like to use i because i saw you did you you did it like one or two maradonas in your highlight reel um but what is your favorite yeah, I don't know. I don't know about those Maradonas. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not someone who probably likes to, or probably very comfortable with those with those skill moves and those flashy moves. For me, it's it's uh, passing the ball to somebody who's probably a little bit better at that than me. Uh, so for me, it's it's kind of just passing and moving and like we kind of talked about getting in those positions to to help players out. Um, if if I had to choose any move, it'd probably be you know the body fakes. I think that's something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can keep improving that as well, but it's very efficient and effective. Um, it's probably not the flashiest thing, but it definitely helps you out in the midfield where sometimes it can be really crowded and you're playing against pretty tough players, right? For sure. And is there a skill move that you like to watch? Yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody loves Ronaldo and his step overs, right? So I, like, I, I enjoy uh, watching him do that. I enjoy uh, watching midfielders with their different turns and, and, and and that kind of thing that kind of maybe maybe go unnoticed. So those things are really important. Um, but I would have to go with uh, Ronaldo, the ex United guy, and his step overs and all the crazy tricks he has in his bag. He does have a lot of tricks. Yeah, yeah, he's an uh, he's an amazing player, amazing player to watch. Do you like Ronaldo better than Messi, or oh, are you do you just like both of them? That's that's the the toughest question of the day. <laughs> I like. I like I like both of them. I think you got to appreciate them both for for how good they are. I think if you're if you're choosing between one or the other, you're kind of diminishing what the other does. So I like to appreciate them both. I think they're both crazy players, uh, extremely talented, and 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 do amazing things. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I think I don't. I, I'm I'm not sure who's better because they're both so amazing. Because they eat. Because it's kind of hard to say. Because because they both have their good games, yeah. and they're good games, and they're excellent games, and they almost never have like a bad game, or like a really bad game. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's probably that's probably what separates them them between everybody else, right? Is they're so consistent. So you, you see them play, and and very rarely do they have again those, those bad games. So they're yeah, both both amazing amazing players to watch. Mm-hmm. And what is the best piece of advice a coach has given you? Mm, a coach has given me. Uh, I've I received I've received so much advice, but I'd probably say the last couple of years is um, in terms of on the field. I like to be a dominant player, so I think uh, one of my university coaches kind of told me to to focus on dominating the the zone that I'm playing in. Right, so sometimes I I kind of uh, drift over and, and, and may try to dominate too many aspects of the game, but he kind of told me to, to, to 
focus my game a little bit and 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 dominate whatever whatever part of the pitch I'm playing or whatever uh, uh, position I'm playing in. So that's kind of yeah. allowed me to focus my game a little bit more in, in into what my position is and 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 dominating, I guess, my opponent that I'm playing against. So that's mm-hmm. certainly helped me out the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a great piece of advice. And because if you just dominate one part, because if you stretch yourself too thin, then you might not be able to dominate as well if you just dominate one part of the pitch. Yeah, and it's whatever uh, whatever allows the team to be successful, right? So if you're dominating your your role or your portion of the pitch and, and your teammates are doing that their portions of the pitch, that's just going to make you a stronger team, right, rather than mm-hmm. you trying trying to uh, do things that, that are assigned to your teammates or cover spaces that are assigned to your teammates, right? So it's whatever works uh, for the team and, and allows the team to be successful. Yeah, definitely. And what advice can you give to young players starting out? Uh, I would say just uh, taking uh, as much advice um, and I wouldn't say criticism, but just taking as much as you can and trying to absorb everything you can. I mean, uh, sometimes if you're getting, some players are getting told something, they kind of take it the wrong way, but you're probably getting told for a reason, right? They probably, whether it's a coach or another player, they probably see something in you that they think that you can improve on. So I would say just kind of trying to take all that advice and, and, and keep improving as a player and just take as much information as you can because it's all going to help you moving forward. Um, so I would say, yeah, that whether it's, again, your coaches or your parents or your teammates, just absorb all that information and try to use it to help you. Mm-hmm. That's great advice. And what is your favorite soccer moment? It could be a game. It could be a goal. It could be an assist. It could be um, when you won a championship, anything. Yeah, I don't have too many goals and assists, uh, but... Uh, probably my the team accolades I've gotten. So the the two championships we kind of talked about before were amazing mm-hmm. moments because you work so hard and it's kind of nice to get that that reward for sure. So I'd say those two, and then I'd also say my first professional game. Uh, you know, it's it's again one of those things where uh, it's like a reward, right? You work so hard and, and you've been playing the sport for such a long time and dedicating yourself for such a long time. So it's nice to, to kind of get that accolade and. And, uh, yeah, it gives you some motivation uh, for, for wanting to keep going and wanting to keep Excel and, and being the best you you can be. Yeah. Nice. Well, do you want to get into the rapid fire? Yeah. Let's do it. That sounds great. So I love that you didn't look at the rapid fire questions yet. I love it that you thought of it as a surprise. You're the first person who's done it, and I love it. <laughs> okay. okay. So hopefully, hopefully it helps me out. Okay. Do you play FIFA? I do. Not very good, but I do. PS4 or Xbox? PS4. Okay. What's up? What team? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. You already answered that. You, you're you pretty much like all or nothing United. Uh, <laughs> favorite fruit? Favorite fruit? Favorite fruit? Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite uh, grapes mm-hmm. or apples. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And what's your favorite vegetable? Favorite vegetable? Oh, man. Not not a big fan of the vegetables. <laughs> no, I would say uh, carrots. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, I love that you said apples because apples are one of my stable foods. I yeah. eat about three of them a day. Oh wow. uh, They're my favorite. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not on that level yet. I'm at one a day, so. I guess <laughs> well, you know, you're um. Only you're, two more, and you'll good, be there. <laughs> you're good enough to have the doctor stay away because one apple a day keeps the doctor away. Exactly. Um, I got to get on those three, though, man. I got some work to do. Do you have a nickname? Uh, not not really from, from my teammates. I mean, Aj, but my, my name's pretty short, so it's uh, not not too much of a nickname. Some people call me by my last name. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing really. My name's pretty short, so it works for most people. Yeah. And what is one superpower you would like to have? Ooh, uh, I would say 
I would say speed, amazing speed. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't quite have that speed, so I'm sure that helped me uh, quite a bit on the pitch. Yeah, in soccer, I'm sure you could you just slow down a little bit so it doesn't look like you're cheating. That, that's true, exactly. Yeah. So and I'm and I'm used to it right now, not having that speed. So for me, it'd kind of be okay to use that once in a while. But sometimes you you gotta uh, settle yourself down, right? Yeah, just be like Adama Traore, that burst of speed. <laughs> Oh, I wish. Yeah, that guy's that guy's amazing to watch, eh? Yeah, he's he's one of my favorites to watch. Um, he, just how dynamic he is, because sometimes he just does scissors to get the defenders in gross, and then he just goes so fast for just explodes away with the cross. Yeah, for sure. No, he uses his uh, his strengths for sure, and uh, yeah. he's, he's been we're doing really really well for for your team the this season, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I hope I really hope he doesn't leave to Man City or Liverpool or somewhere else. Me too. I hope he doesn't as well. Um, and do you cook, uh, or what's your favorite thing to cook? Sorry. Uh, I do cook. I'm not that great at it. I'm getting, I'm getting better. Uh, I would say my favorite, my favorite probably thing to eat, in, and and it's like tacos. So like I like to make tacos and I'll have it with ground chicken or that type of thing. So. Uh, that's probably one of my my favorite things to eat that I yeah that I can cook. Okay. Yeah. And what's your favorite movie? What's my favorite movie? Uh, I have a couple, so I really like the Dark Knight series. Uh, okay. I like yeah, I like that. I like uh, the Prestige. I don't know if you've heard of that. That's one of my favorite mm-hmm. movies, and I like I will say. Inception. I really like that movie as well. I wish I knew one of those. Not the, what about the Dark Knight series. Project. What? Like what about the Dark Knight, the Batman series? You must have seen those. No, I actually, I just start, I just started mar- watching my first. I just watched my first Marvel movie in quarantine, and I don't watch DC or anything. So the only reason I watch it was because I like Tom Holland as an <laughs> elf and onward. <laughs> No, you gotta you gotta get on those Dark Knights, man. Those all three of those are are amazing amazing movies to watch. Okay, I'm not, I'm, not even watch I, them today now. We'll, yeah, add, we'll that, add them to the list. Yeah, yeah that, I'm not. I wonder if Dad can deal with that because he doesn't like Marvel movies that much. Ah, okay, okay. Mommy right. thinks my thinks they're cool though. Mommy I gave him some cool. other non Marvel movies, so I gave you a list there. Okay. okay. <laughs> um. What's your favorite board game? Uh, board game, I like, I'd probably say Monopoly. Monopoly's always fun. It just takes too long. So uh, Monopoly, I haven't played it in quite a while just because it takes forever to play. It does. It's yeah. probably my favorite growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, yeah, I, yeah, Monopoly's fun. I like, uh, I always like Sorry. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. yeah, Sorry's also fun. Yeah, I like that. Game. It's always and so it's- annoying. It's always so annoying when you get sorry, but it's kind of fun to sorry someone else. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's such a great game. That's why it's a genius game. <laughs> and what's your, what kind of soccer boots do you wear? Uh, I wear tiempos. So I, I've worn tiempos for a couple of years now, and I think before that I wore CTRs. So I've been, with, been wearing Nike uh, for quite a while now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what? What is one thing that people don't know about you, but they would be surprised to know about you? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, this is the one that always gets people stumped. Because <laughs> they've been thinking for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't. Uh, I can't think of anything super interesting right now. Uh, that's what everybody says, but you, <laughs> but that's what everybody yeah. says, and then they come up with something that they had in their with they 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 just say what they were thinking, and then I get impressed. Yeah, at least you know I'm being authentic though. Like I didn't actually cheat and and look at the questions beforehand, right? Because otherwise I would have had a, an answer prepared, but I don't. I'll try to I'll try <laughs> to think of something and let you know when I think of something. But okay, um, well then, three words to define you. What would they be? Three words to define me. Okay, I would say uh, I'll give myself resilient uh, as one word. Uh, I will give myself um, 
hopefully one thing I'd like to be is selfless. Uh, so kind of help in uh, others and, and helping the team when it comes to soccer. And the third I will say is um, kind. I don't know. I try to be kind to people as well. So maybe nice. I, don't I, like others, those. I don't know if other people will characterize me as those, but those are three things that I definitely try to try to be in and personify. Well, I, I like those. Okay, cool, good. In, in the hour in the hour that we've talked, I I I, I can see those. I can see those <laughs> in the hour that we've talked. Okay, good, good. Um, and do you have siblings? I do. I've uh, two siblings, uh, and then some some very close cousins as well. So I have a lot of close family. Okay. Yeah. And then this is my last rapid fire question: What are your goals for the future? Ooh, my goals for the future are are trying to trying to just play for play at a high level for as long as I can play, uh, and then whether it's in sport or whatever else, just trying to trying to be as successful and do the best I can at whatever I'm doing. Um, but yeah, in terms of soccer, just keep keep trying to improve as a player, keep trying to help my team uh, every year that I play, and and yeah, hopefully we can get some achievements for this team as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I'm excited to see Atletico Ottawa play for the first time. It has so many fans, but we haven't seen them play yet. I'm 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 really excited to see them. So hopefully the season will start soon. And you're supposed to be the Wanderers' first game, I, I think, at the at your stadium. Yeah, at your I, stadium. And yeah, then, I, yeah. And then for like our fi- for our fifth game, you'd come back to our stadium or somewhere in the to like first five. We've been yeah. playing each other a lot. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited as well. And every time uh, I play in Halifax, it's it's always a blast. Like with the fans and the stadium, it's an amazing atmosphere. So um, when when everything gets back to normal, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I would I would imagine that uh, Ottawa would have a, a a good a good fan base. You know, it seems like it seems like a good kind of population, and I, I think they I think they would do well. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, a lot of the people are, are pretty supportive of, of soccer and the clubs from from what I know so far. So I think yeah, there'd be there'd be quite a bit of support. And I know even with the Fury, right? There was a lot of people that enjoyed watching their games, and 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 they they drew a, a lot of people in attendance to their games. So hopefully we can keep that going for us. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I'm excited to see you play in a red and white and blue jersey. Thank you. I'm I'm as well. I'm I'm excited to 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 put on those those colors as well obviously it's been a tough tough little time here that that it got delayed but i think uh hopefully we'll have we'll have uh some games in the near future and i'll be able to to throw on those colors yeah that will definitely be exciting to see ajay and and we'll be definitely looking forward to uh seeing you on the pitch and uh seeing you dominate the the midfield there yeah thank you guys I, i really appreciate it thank you very much yeah and when you play at the Wanders Gun, since I'm a ball boy there, I'll be I'll be able to see you play up close a lot. Yeah, yeah. You can if I happen to score a goal or something, you can be my one fan that's that's cheering for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna want to do the ball. Maybe do something something quiet or just like a little fist pump. But I'll appreciate you. I'll always congratulate you. Perfect. Even even after the game, you yeah. can do it so nobody sees. No problem. That's good with me. Yep. And I hopefully the season will start. We'll see you soon. Um, in person, hopefully next time. Awesome. For sure. No, thank you guys for this. It was amazing. You guys asked some amazing questions, and, and I appreciate uh, you guys having me on. Yeah, yeah and thanks so much for sharing too. your your uh, you know your thoughts and and you know going deep with us into some of those questions. Yeah, you had some amazing answers. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, we'll Ajay. Yeah. Appreciate nice your time. Ajay. We'll see Bye. you soon, guys. Bye.